First, consider figure skaters as an analogy to pendulums that can also make irregular shapes with the caveat that they are rotating freely about their center of mass. Every physics lab comes with a lab manual of fake pendulum period formulas. This is not because the ratio to a circle's radius to its circumference is not 2 pi. It is. However, this simple harmonic motion only applies to single pendulums at very small angles. We know the pendulum period isn't the same as the period of a sine wave, because sine waves make a very distinct shape when you derive them over and over and over again. Consider that a double pendulum is just too chaotic to be included in this model. This is because small differences in initial conditions have huge downstream consequences in the bifurcation model. We will be using two right-hand rules, one from linear algebra pictured right and another from induction pictured left. Rather than deriving the equations of inertia for each object from Steiner theorem, I will link to Steiner theorem in the description so that you can see where the equations, for instance, the thin ring, come from. Steiner's theory of inertia and mass is not the only theory that uses arbitrary shapes. We see these also in area of moment of inertia and perpendicular axis theorem. However, these are two completely different theories and we will only be using the right for now. To my knowledge, if we did this vector multiplication in 3D, that would be linear algebra. But when we do this in 2D and calculate the differential, we arrive to an equation of foundational importance for us. An equation that states that the moment of inertia of the pendulum is equal to the moment of inertia about the center of mass and the distance between parallel axes. Consider another analogy. Inertia is to angular momentum as torque is to angular acceleration. First is the physical free body diagram of the pendulum. The second graph is the first derivative of that, theta theta dot, which is called the quote unquote abstract graph. The third graph that we sketch is the second derivative shrunken vector field equation graph and that is because it is a second-order differential equation. We can add a term mu to indicate air resistance, and this will twist our field lines. We can overlay the rod graphs on top of each other and see how they follow our field lines in a very predictable way. You may have noticed that these field lines are clockwise. This is because when our first derivative is positive, our second derivative is always pointing to the right. And when our first derivative is negative, our second derivative is always pointing to the left. 